We talk a lot on this podcast about independent artists developing their careers and turning music into a full-time gig instead of just a hobby. One aspect that we don't discuss enough is the financial side of things. I'm not an expert in that department, but here's a guy who is. Trevor Fisher of Way to Wealth Management is a local certified financial planner who can help you start planning your financial independence. Although Trevor was recommended to me by some local musicians and past guests on the show, he can also help young people plan for their financial future, help those close to retirement map out their next steps, get young families on the road to success, and more. Call Trevor at 204-471-3011 or email him at trevor at way2wealth.ca to get your finances on the right track today. All mutual funds provided through Fundex Investments Incorporated. This episode of Which Police Radio is my conversation with folk trio Kasadi. They're set to release their brand new album, This Is Just To Say, on September 25th at the Crescent Fort Rouge Church. We hung out and talked about the new record, talked about the ukulele songs, about covering heavy topics while playing generally upbeat instruments, and much more. Usually when I'm recording the podcast, I'm using this new recorder, which has worked out fantastically well, but there's a few different microphones that I can choose when doing the interviews, the little attachments that go on to the recorder itself. And normally I use the same one every time, but based on the way we were sitting for this episode, I decided to switch it up, and in retrospect, probably wasn't the right choice. You can still hear everyone fine, everything comes through, but it's not quite as good sound-wise as I wanted it to be, and maybe not as good as you're used to for some of the other recordings that were done at the same spot. So, I mean, you can hear everything, the conversation is great, I highly recommend the album, everything's positive there, but it's a little bit, I want to say thinner than maybe it would have been if I'd used the other mic. But that shouldn't take away from your enjoyment of the interview and your enjoyment of Kasadi's excellent new music. You're listening to Garbage Hill, one of its first podcast network. radio i'm in a coffee shop again um this seems to be the replacement for the food court which is kind of nice because the food court ones you always have people screaming in the background or someone dropping trays or whatever and, and this seems a little bit more chill um and this is actually the first in a while of these lunch hour ones that i've done where there's a whole band here usually it's just you know one member of the band who happens to be available but all three of you are here which is kind of cool so um i'm here with all three members of Kasadi, and i think the best way to kind of get started is if you want to introduce yourselves and what you do in the band and then we can put names to the voices great uh, I'm Grace Karabi, and I sing and play ukulele and auto harp. I am Jesse, and I sing and play the guitar. I'm Quentin, I play double bass and hurdy gurdy, and also sing. Cool, cool. I like how the two of you said sing first, and you, your sing is like an afterthought. Yeah, it's, a, it's an afterthought. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a new, it's a new uh, endeavor I've gotten into oh, cool. with okay. this band. Okay, cool, cool. And that's why. And I guess the reason we're doing this now is because you have a new record coming out any minute. I yeah. mean, depending when people hear this, but it, at the time we're recording this, it's very, very yeah. soon. Imminent. Yeah. Very. It's going to be coming out on uh, Friday, so just in a couple of days. And uh, yeah, it's very exciting. And very imminent. <laughs> very imminent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have the previous record, the one that came out in uh, 2017, I want to say. And so how would you, I guess, define the sound of this one as compared to that? So I have, because I have a frame reference there. But. Yeah. Sure. Have things changed at all, or is it still essentially the same sound? Uh, No, I think it's a development of the same sound. Um, Like, the sort of idea is live off the floor with both of the albums, so this one is more live off the floor. On the last one, we, Quentin and I did some harmonies and stuff like that after the fact, though I think Grace tracked most of her vocals live, and we tracked some of our solos after the fact last time. This time, everything was live off the floor. All of us singing, playing together, like only slightly farther apart than we are now yeah, yeah, yeah. a few feet apart all microphones around us as best as Lloyd could Lloyd Peterson was engineering it right. at Paintbox as best as he could manage to fit us all in there with everything um, so this album is very live off the floor the sound is similar I think maybe it's a little 
what's what would you say? Maybe a little rougher around the edges with the. I don't know, but I st- I don't know. It's yeah, similar. I think it's 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 still in the same vein as the first album, but definitely some developments and um, something that I've been thinking about is just like touring the last album and getting a lot more comfortable with all of the harmonies that okay. were done separately on the last album, um, but having to be able to do that on on a nightly basis while sure. we're on tour, you really kind of get your chops up and then uh, to go into studio to record this I feel like we were definitely in a way better place to give that a try and I mean when we went into studio we were just like we'll see what happens as far as recording all the vocals and the harmonies at the same time yeah. in studio but um, and solos and, and solos everything, and everything. You know? but the vocals yeah. were that was a really big uh, big step I think for the whole group as far as doing it live and I'm really happy with the way that it turned yeah. out. And the overall sort of change between the two albums, I think there's just more vocal harmonies, all three of us singing on pretty much every song, or there's a couple that just Grace and I sing on, but we sing dual lead kind of okay. thing the sure, entire sure. song. We do that on two or three songs on this album. And uh, so a lot more vocal harmonies. Uh, Quentin sings lead on a track, which he didn't do on the last album. I sing lead on two or three on this one. Okay. So just more variety in the vocals yeah and, and of course like else. you know we've been gigging a lot and touring over the past two years yeah. and uh, doing a lot of actually uh, kind of cover band uh, gigs uh, bands as bands oh, yeah, yeah, shows yeah, sure, bars, sure. where we learn a bunch of <laughs> repertoire from different bands and different genres and um, that I think kind of just sort of matured our sound a little bit and, and we just got tighter as a, as a collaborating trio what kind of bands did you cover well, we did two shows at the Handsome Daughter. One where we were doing Nirvana, okay, and one where we were doing which they the described Beatles, as yeah. uh, they described us as because Grace plays the ukulele. Yeah. Uh, Nirvana unplugged in a tiki bar. Okay. <laughs> so that's yeah. the vibe. Uh, we did a Beatles one. So yeah. we did, and we tackled some hard harmonies yeah. for that Eleanor one. We did Rigby. because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. Eleanor yeah. Rigby. So yeah. some tricky stuff. Yeah. And tried to like nail their arrangements as much as we could, so that was cool. And then on top of that, like we've done lots of oldie type stuff. We've sure. done Everly Brothers and things like that. And Willie uh, Nelson. Cool. We did oh, a yeah, Willie Nelson really tribute really show, cool. so we learned a bunch of his songs. So I mean, just all over the map. Yeah, yeah. And that led us to say like, you know, we don't like being too much in one genre or another. We like taking bits and pieces from one genre and just finding like, oh well, maybe this is too country for us, or maybe this is just the right amount that we can borrow and use yeah. in our own material somehow. You know, there are like there are doo y type things on two or three tracks on this album that we're doing now, and that's you know because we listen to some of that music, and we sure. like some of that music, we love the Beatles, and they do they sort of steal a lot of that, and so we just found what we could take from that that would work for us or inspire us to just come up with something that was our own. Sure. But I agree that doing like all those different covers and different genres by different bands just like maybe like tuned us in a little bit more to some things that fit with our uh, instrumentation okay. and voices that we maybe wouldn't have thought that was a direction we would go. Well, I guess it challenges you too, right? To go way out of your comfort zone because Nirvana covers like, yeah. what you do. I, I, I kind of sad I missed that. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> cool. It sounds like it would have been pretty cool. Um, do you think that um, the all of those influences coming in and, and discovering these new things about what you can do, do you think that adds to the kind of, I don't want to say confusion, but I feel like you're a group that is hard to sort of pin down as one thing because you have the jazz, obviously, influences. You have the folk stuff. Um, like you said, there's always the doo wop things and Nirvana covers and all that coming in. Yeah. Like, do you have a hard time sort of placing yourselves within? Because everyone wants to file everything away. I, yeah. I do that myself for sure all yeah. the time. I want to put someone as oh, yeah. they're this kind of band. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if you guys easily fit. I think it. it's. Uh, I think it's interesting. I think in some ways it works to our advantage. I think when we were going in to record the last album, even we were trying to kind of fit ourselves a little bit more into a box. Okay. Like every application you fill out, only check one box. Right, and you like, can't check five. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. the meanest thing to do to somebody who is trying to keep an open mind. Sure, right? sure. And. Um, I think really like doing all of those different styles made us think like people like the variety and like we're always gonna end up checking the folk box because it's the one that yeah. we fit the most in but I think that having just so much variety from one song to the next even in our live shows makes the audience unsure where to right. put us and I think that almost just drops that they're not really worried about what the genre is as much 
we used to have people come up to us all the time and be like, I don't like jazz, but I like this. And right. it's like, I know, but it's not You're not really, really jazz, jazz, but you kind of are. <laughs> yeah. And I guess having a hurdy-gurdy makes you folk, no matter what anyone wants to call it. Like, yeah. It kind of sticks yeah, you firmly in that category, yeah. right? Yeah. Crooked Road. Closing doors and closing minds Why we just cannot be kind Why do we do what we don't believe Give someone what they really need What they need Give someone what they that I, I've noticed ukulele all over the place now all of a sudden yeah. it seems like over the past couple of years my, my daughter wants ukulele like everyone everyone is playing it yeah how I guess how did you how did you get in the, into the instrument and how long have you been doing it and then what do you feel about this kind of ukulele sauce yeah <laughs> you know it's like well a, I've been uh, I've been playing for about 10 years okay. now but so uh, you well predate this kind of new yeah yeah I guess so like started with the same like $40 ukulele sure. that everybody starts with and um, just wanted to learn a strumming instrument. I'd never played any stringed instrument at okay, all. Okay. Um, I was going to teach myself, so guitar seemed like a little bit of a bigger endeavor. It's a bit daunting, so yeah, yeah. Started with the ukulele and um, just started teaching myself chords and getting into it. But then to introduce it into a group that is playing music that's this challenging, yeah. you really are pushing the instrument to its limits in some ways. Like these, like some of the chords I play are not chords that you really see. Uh, on a regular chord chart. Sure, than chords do like keys. The yeah, yeah, ukulele yeah, yeah. people stick to like the open chord keys, yeah. and when we write a song and we want it in this key, that's where it fits best for our vo voices. Sure. So and to be playing an E major yeah. and have and C sharp like, and G sharp chords all over exactly, the place is crazy I, on ukulele. I think like even I've tried a capo and it, it doesn't really sound great. The yeah, I don't think I've ever so seen anyone playing it. Play it doesn't it, stand tune. It doesn't really stand tune. And yeah. so it's like if we're gonna play it in the right key for my voice, then I'm gonna be forced to learn all of these crazy keys sure, that yeah. maybe uh, are not in the comfort zone of somebody who's just picking it up for fun. Sure. And I think um, I think that 
a lot of people who are interested in the ukulele really love watching our band because well and I've had people say who are ukulele enthusiasts for sure like oh you're really giving the ukulele some uh, what did they say They're like dignity it some dignity because right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it has this reputation as kind of a kid's instrument yeah. right? and, yeah. and yeah. I guess the idea that it, it can be more versatile than that is kind of cool because I think that people yeah they assume that there's maybe five chords you can play on it yeah you know and then then you're done there's yeah. just that limited yeah. well and I think a lot of people when they see I play the ukulele they'll come up and talk to me, oh yeah yeah I play ukulele and then after they watch our show they'll come up and be like oh Man. Yeah, that's like, not the same thing. What yeah. were you doing? <laughs> like they'll just be like, "Oh, you're strumming," and what were you, what was that chord? And they're so in, they're so into it. And I hope that like all these people who are interested in it see there's like there is another level yeah, to yeah. the instrument. Like it doesn't have to just be that beginner book, and not every song has to be in C. <laughs> and there's other there's there's more to it than that. Right, right. If you want to go that far, I'm playing melodies on it and that sort of thing. You take a couple solos on the album with it. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So I think like. I'm glad that there's that kind of resurgence of yeah. the instrument happening because it is a really fun instrument It's and it is easy to pick up and really you can get pretty far just by watching YouTube videos. Sure, sure. And so I think it's, I think it's good and a lot of people I think who are interested in our band a lot of them are in like a ukulele club and yeah, there are love, there are clubs. There's they a club love here. coming yeah, yeah, yeah. up and talking yes. about it. So I think it's it's good for us. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I noticed, uh, just to go back to the genre thing for a minute, I, I hate talking about genres because it is so hard for everyone to pin themselves down. But you have uh, spaghetti western listed <laughs> in the official I think bio. That's mostly a joke. <laughs> is, is it just just for fun, or is there? I mean, is, we, we had, used to have. Yeah, we did have one too. We <laughs> wrote that was sort of had that vibe. Quentin yeah. Tarantino okay, inspired. Yeah. Uh, uh, we yeah, stopped playing it, but we just left that in. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I, I like it. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely. Well, I think like you see that and you go, I don't know what this is going right, to sound like, right. and that's really the best way to approach our music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a good way to approach it. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Not, not not assuming it's going to be folk or not assuming yeah. it's going to be jazz. Or, yeah. I don't even know what exactly defines spaghetti western. So. It, well, it evokes something though. Yeah. I, mean, I oh, have an idea. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. And then I was trying to find which song is <laughs> the word yeah, yeah, spaghetti western. It's not recorded. No, does, does the um, does the live recording it live with all three of you just you know the way you described earlier? Do you think that that's noticeable to listeners over the previous album? Like, do you think people can? Is there a rawness to it or like a? Our uh, our engineer Lloyd Peterson uh, at Paintbox uh, Recording uh, was talking to us about that because we we definitely gave him a challenge of how yeah. close we wanted to physically stand okay. with the yeah. mics so we had like almost no isolation so you have to be bleeding into each other yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'll basically yeah. if one person did something that they didn't like that whole section of the take was sure either you just have to accept it and include it in the final take or that part is scrapped and you sure. have to all try it again together um, so it sort of changes the recording process from what the standard is now yeah, yeah, like definitely. overdubs and definitely. scratch tracks and everything um but, hmm. like, do you think it's noticeable to someone who's not one of the three of you? Oh, right. I think, yeah. I think, I think, I think, like, I think it sounds live. Like, like, I really do think it comes across. There's a certain energy that I think is there when it's live, and you're all in the same room. And if something happens, you're that like the energy changes for all of you. Sure. Whereas if sure. you're overdubbing something. You're just trying to match, like, you're even trying to match the energy that was there, and that's really hard to do yeah, a lot yeah. of the time. And uh, it's funny, even um, on our very first album that we recorded under my name back in 2013, I know there's, like, one track, and we were recording that all live, like, but I was just singing. Okay. And uh, at the end, Jesse did something, and, like, you can hear in my last note that I'm, like, kind of smiling. Oh, yeah? And I always that's, think, that's like, cool. that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. You wouldn't have things like that if you were just overdubbing. No, because you would have done it 35 times. And I would have heard that yeah. thing, like, 35 times. Yeah, yeah. So it wouldn't be like, oh, cool, that was a crazy ending. Yeah. You know? It comes from our jazz background. I sure, think our, sure. our love of that spontaneity, yeah. um, the collaboration in the moment where it's not just um, like playing to a click or playing to the Or with headphones, things. like we don't or have headphones yeah. on, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. So it, we're just like this, you know? Just it's a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Does that, does that jazz background kind of seep into uh, what you're doing as far as when you're coming up with the material, like in terms of improvising, and how much of it is kind of pre-written and how much of it is sort of developed? Uh, I think we leave some solos and that sort of thing to be improvised, most of the solo, well maybe about half, yeah. Yeah. but uh, no, this is more arranged. Okay. I still do think the jazz thing comes into play, 
I think it comes into play because with jazz, you're sort of always on your feet, yeah. listening to each other. Yeah. And we bring that attitude to everything we do, whether it's, oh, we should really get quiet in this section. I hear he's leading the way right now. It's his vocal and his whatever, and he's bringing it down. We all jump in like that. And okay. you can do that in any music, but jazz, you're always on your toes well, you're doing that. that right? you you're trained for that, you're listening for that. You're listening for subtle tempo shifts or whatever it might be. This se section's getting more energetic. Let's, we can bring it up a notch. We try to keep it steady and groove, but we can bring it up a notch, those kind of things. We were playing with a, we were rehearsing yesterday and playing with a metronome to really get something to feel right. And we noticed, and we were like, we slowed, we do pull this back here, yeah. but we want to keep that because that feels right. Like sure, that's, sure. that's yeah. natural, you know? Yeah. So it's just... Uh, Rather than trying too hard to fit into the... Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. You, you go with what's musical at the yeah. end of the day. Sure. But yes. I think the jazz thing leads us to that. I also often. find, like, for me anyway, the jazz thing really comes into play when we're playing live and something goes wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like right away we're just like... Like, if someone drops a beat or somebody comes in in the wrong spot, there's always that, like... It, it's like my brain just goes right back to when we were a jazz trio and it's like... We gotta figure this out without stopping. Sure. We gotta figure this out sure. without saying anything to each other, and you just like you figure it out. And you can't hide behind it because it's you know the sound is fairly intimate and it's all yeah. acoustic. Yeah. You can't hide behind you know distortion or something to be. No, not at all. You can't get or, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so I feel like having that training though, where you don't know what will happen, you don't know when someone's gonna be finished their solo, you don't know when they're gonna want you to come back in. You're always just like you're playing, but you're just like, yeah, and yeah. then what? And now what? Yeah. And so I think um, when we're on stage, no matter what kind of music we're playing, we're always kind of in that headspace, which really helps us. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And then I think working with, like, I think there are a lot of different rhythms and feels on this album. I think we try to look for variety in that. And when working with rhythm, I think we're always looking for, I know, I mean, when we're talking about it as we're rehearsing, we're looking for that same feeling we get from swing, I think. Okay. Which sure, is just sure. this, like, it pocket. just feels good. It's the pocket, the it's pocket. the groove, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all those words yeah. they use to do that. But it's like, we know that feeling from when we're playing jazz and it's just sitting exactly right, you know? And no matter what the feel, even if it's a folk thing, I'm thinking of something like Country Roses, we want it to, which is sort of a Neil Young type okay. vibe. Okay. It's not a jazz thing at all. Yeah. But when I'm thinking of that feel, I want that same feeling that I have okay. when okay. something's swinging. Is know? it harder to get that feeling without having, without having drums, for example? I mean, because, you know, getting that, that rhythm down when you have a... a it's obvious when you have a drummer, right? Yeah. And you're kind of floating around. I mean, obviously you're playing, yeah. but, but it's, it's not there. Like it's, it's, it's interesting. It make it. A lot of people who uh, see us play, before they see us play, they just see us setting up, they're always like, I don't have a drummer. Yeah. These are always Why drummers who see that. Every show, if there's a drummer there, they'll come up and be like, wait, you guys not setting up with a drummer? Yeah, well, you don't yeah. have one? I can get got my, you know, got my set in the car. <laughs> like, no, no, no. We don't play with drums. But often, at the end of hearing us, they'll be like, I could still hear them. I, yeah, could, I yeah. can still hear all the rhythm that the drums would have played. And, th and that's really cool because, I mean, not playing with a drummer ever, we we fill that role, yeah. you know, with whatever we can. So if something, if we feel like this style's not really coming across because this is what we're trying to imply is not coming through, it might be like changing the bass line or it might be changing the strumming or sure. something like that. And then, you know, usually we can capture that same feeling with this instrumentation. But it's really like being aware that we want that exact feel to come across, I think. Yeah. Well, and that, that I, not, not, I don't mean to imply that everyone needs drums, but because yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of artists who don't uh, don't have drummers. And oh yeah. Everyone to everyone that. needs yeah. rhythm, yeah. but yeah. not yeah. everyone yeah. needs yeah. drums. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we yeah. make sure yeah. the rhythm is there and feels good. Exactly. And we and it also it pushes us to do something creative and hopefully unique or different. Yes. Yeah. Well, we don't have a drummer that's laying this obvious thing down. So how can we fill that void, or how can we yeah. suggest that without actually doing it? You know. And I guess without one of you obviously filling that spot every every song, right? I mean, it's better so across the three of you. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. you're all the combined the drum kit, hopefully. You sure, know? sure. The yeah. kick drum and the snare and whatever else, the accents or yeah, whatever sure. else we need, you know? Sure. And we will, as we're working on a song, we'll sort of sing what a drum part might be to each other. To do, to chat, to do, to chat, to do, to chat. Okay, we're kind of thinking that. That's in the back of our minds. How much of that are we going to play or not play or leave out or suggest or hint yeah. at or that kind of thing? Well, and I guess the suggestion is what what's there a lot of the time more more than not, right? It's, yeah. You don't hear the drums, but you know, like you're saying, you hear enough of what they yeah. would be playing yeah. that you can fill the rest in. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. What is the um? What's the plan once the album is released? I mean, because you know it's been a while in the making. And now you're about to unleash it upon the world. Yeah. Oh, what are you guys doing next? Is there tours or anything like that? Happening? There is. Yeah. We're heading west in October, just a short tour, I think about eight or nine shows. Okay. Um, 
planning to do a homework tour, so another tour nice. of all house concerts in Best the spring. Kind of shows ever, yeah. We love those, yeah. yeah. And uh, well, just keep doing what we're doing, just doing cool. it, sharing it with people. Hope people listen to it and enjoy it and see us and hear the album and, you know. Yeah. That sort of stuff. Uh, are the house shows kind of the ideal environment for you guys as well? Like, do you feel that's they like, are, the intimacy? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. So when we can't do house shows, we try to find a, like uh, smaller coffee shops, restaurants yeah. that want to like close the whole place and do a concert. Because that's just like we we just do better in a really intimate environment, and the people who like our music want to just listen. Yeah. And yeah. so it's hard sometimes when we're in the wrong place and audiences who already know our music come. It's frustrating for them and yeah. it's hard for us. So it's like. We just don't like seeing people in that kind of position, okay. you know? Under the bed there lives a demon in the dark With eyes as red as rubies and a cold stone beating heart He sounds just like the wind when he cries out in the night He lives in the shadows I hide in the toured before and as the, you know probably a few times at this point how are you received like I mean is, is, it, is it easy to find sort of your audience in other cities yeah that's a good question it's it's tricky there's some places where we've played uh, in one city or town more than once and you know maybe one time 
we don't get a lot of people the next time it's a different venue and yeah. we get a better better crowd so I think sometimes it's just like you know being committed to finding the right place so even some places you play and you get paid a guarantee but you're like eh, this isn't like our these are not our audience yeah this isn't the right place for us so even though there were people here they weren't really listening the same way that we like and so yeah I think it's uh, uh, often you can tell if the kind of people who like our music will come to the venue sure so you know if somebody approaches us they're like oh we have this folk night it's like oh great that seems like people yeah, who yeah. come to that are going to want to sit and listen yeah, they were, they're, they're used to being quiet. They're used to hearing kind of storytelling and, 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 and acoustic instruments. Yeah, sure, yeah sure, exactly. Sure. So I think like as far as like when we're planning our tours, there's places now that we know that place really works for us, so we try to book that like every second tour. And then uh, when we're looking for new places, we just have a pretty good idea. Just You can honestly just look at a place and have a pretty yeah. good idea who's going to go there. Sure, so, sure. Yeah. Well, well, I guess what is the kind of... This is a weird question, but who is the ideal listener for your stuff? I mean, what kind of person... If you could, I don't know, like design an ideal fan yeah. of your music. It's, yeah, that's a that's a good question. I mean, I think that number one, like the age range for us, like we tend to get a little bit of an older audience, Makes but sense, the yeah. young people who come see us like really enjoy our yeah. music. So when you mean um, older, though, do you mean like you know forties, fifties, or eighty and up, or like what kind of uh, like sometimes. Like, we'll have an audience that's mostly 40 to 70. Okay, that makes like, sense, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, I think some of that is the, the places we choose to play. Um, I think uh, a lot of the people, though, who come out and really enjoy our music are people who want to listen to music that makes them stop and think okay. and really engage them. I think some people like listening to music that they can just kind of like go about their day and it doesn't really... Yeah, like background. Yeah, background music, yeah but yeah. our music's not really like that. Um, I think people really feel something when they listen to it and so if you don't like feeling things then you probably won't <laughs> like our music yeah. and I think that that, that So robots happen. are out, yeah. Robots are out, yeah. they won't like us. Um, but yeah, I think like age-wise age like we just tend to get an older demographic but like young people do like it as well but I think that's the main thing for our listeners is like they have to want to engage with the content and we cover some things that are sometimes a little heavy okay and uh, and you know we try to do it in a musical way that is easy to listen to and maybe you know we never try to make anybody feel like they're the problem we always just try to say like there is a solution mm -hmm. there is a way you will be okay we want people to feel like they're part of a community when they listen to our music okay Why is war what we need? For new technology Super glue and canned food Radar and airplanes There's gotta be a better way Followed birds into the sky With metal wings we took off Above the trees Above the clouds we could fly Some airplanes carry people Other airplanes transport goods The little boy falls The fat man waits for his turn Why is for what we need? on the hospital The receptionist 
calls out my name. Mr. Popsky, take a seat. Mr. Popsky, please roll up your sleeve. How much blood is in the blood bank? How much blood is in the ground? Does it wash away after years of rain or does it stain? Why is for what we need? That the type of music you play lends itself well to covering heavy topics, because I mean, I mean, if, if you want to just call it folk, folk has a long tradition of, of covering very serious things, often in a way that is not musically a downer. I mean, often it is, <laughs> but right, but, yeah, but yeah. I mean, you know, I feel like your stuff is, is musically relatively uplifting and and fun and, and positive, kind of you know, even bouncy at times, right? Yeah. But I mean, do you think do you find it's an easy fit to talk about something lyrically that is maybe not so bouncy? <laughs> You guys wrote the heaviest things. Yeah, we okay, did. Okay, okay. Quentin wrote like a protest song specifically with environmental issues and okay. things like that. Yeah. And I wrote sort of an anti-war song. Those are two that. Right, and, and those, those are heavy issues. Heavier. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. They're also folk issues. They right? are definitely like, folk issues. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, if you were in a hardcore band, those would be easy to put across yeah. because that's the whole. I mean, you're ba literally yeah. yelling at people. With right? us, yeah. yeah. And then you yeah. might but with not us, know people are really listening. That's true too. Yeah. Or hearing the words, or if that's the like, we're very like, you're gonna hear every lyric. Sure, that's sure. the first yeah. thing we consider. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the one that I do has some sort of dark comedy to it, okay. so I think that's one tactic of getting that across or just a little bit of surreal strangeness to yeah. it yeah and which i guess helps. for mine the crooked road tune which is a political one uh criticizing you know political social and uh, uh like the way we're our world is so intertwined with uh, oil power and sure. how this is a challenge of our of our time um I was also hearing the musical accompaniment, like the rhythmic and chordal kind of accompaniment, in this very kind of like nostalgic for me, like uh, my my uncle sitting around the kitchen table strumming okay. their folky guitars, you know, singing like that was sort of the the vibe, the okay. the genre kind of vibe that I was hearing paired with this uh, heavy thing. So mm, yeah, maybe that is that is connected to the old. Folk, uh, yeah, there's, there's a tradition of that for sure. I mean, like, yeah, you know, I never thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. I do think, though, like in both of these songs, even though they are covering kind of a heavy topic, your song, Crooked Road, at the end, like it's still saying, like, I think if we do the right thing, it's not too late. Like, there's right. this message of hope there. It's not a huge downer. And the whole same time. with Jesse's, yeah. the like whole point of Jesse's song is there's got to be a better way for us to do this. Yeah. And so, even though we're covering these heavy topics, I think we're still trying to see them from an optimistic point of view okay. because I think we're surrounded by so much pessimism and like just reality is really dark. It is, yeah. And it can and it can be too much sometimes for people. So you have to present these things in a way where people are willing to hear them because I think too often, like just like you see an article, and sometimes you see an article and you're just like, I can't read this. That's too much. Like, I have to write a lot of those in my day job. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, and like yeah. I think you have to do it in a way, right, where you think like I still have to engage people so yeah. that they feel like 
there's something there that they can do. Like that's the biggest yeah, thing people yeah. want to know. But what do I do? That's, yeah, where's that, the call to action? Yeah, yeah. That's the sure. that's the time we're living in. But that right might now. be arts role. That might be more yeah. what we do. If yours is like a news thing, yeah, that yeah. might be you present the facts. Direct, and we need the yeah. facts. Yeah. That's yeah. obviously incredibly important. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's our role to end in these songs to engage with it and go, well, here's kind of how we think yeah. and feel about it. And here's maybe a solution or a, a path that we're looking at to well, get Well, take out. that news and filter it through your own lenses yeah. and then yeah, project that onto the yeah. audience. Yeah. Yeah. And but I think, often, I think that means taking the time to see something that can be done. Sure. Like, it's hard. It, I think that makes us look at things longer, maybe, at things that bother us because we want to be able to filter it through that lens where it's you can hear it you can take it in and you yeah. feel like there's something that can be done still yeah. well, otherwise everything would be super bleak and everyone would yeah, be just yeah. be on exactly. depressed all the time yeah. and I think for us as like musicians and, and music lovers we uh, I know I do anyway like really process a lot of information through music through like writing and yeah uh, listening, listening and, yeah. and, uh, and playing and that kind of thing and it's uh kind of just the only thing I can do when I read yeah. these articles that you sure. write. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not all my fault. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but you're right, you're right, yeah, yeah. Because you, you get the emotional impact of that too, and, and, and the, the, the factual or the editorial opinion or whatever it is you're getting from the song, yeah. is yeah, you connect with it on, on two levels, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's hard, your original question was like how the music maybe yeah, suits mesh, that, yeah, and yeah. it's hard to say like, if you just heard the song without the words, you wouldn't know that this song is obviously about that. It's right. not really like that, but it's like by presenting the song in a way where it's really clear, uh, where the words are really clear, and the music is maybe, I think the music clearly, like Quentin was saying, references another type of music that did that. I think we're all sure. very inspired by the music we love, and we play off of it. We don't, you know, do it exactly the same, but we play off of it. So we play off, this is a folk protest song, and the music is folky in a way. We yeah, can yeah. take our own twists and turns with it, but there's that, you know? Mine's also an anti-war protest song, and to me the chords are very Beatles-esque, that's okay. what I was inspired okay. by, right? So it's very, you think of John Lennon and things like that, it sort of puts it in, puts you in that mind and we reference it sort of that way. And that's another kind of vein of protest music anyway, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Okay, so people, if they are wanting to hear the new album, what's the best option to get that once it's out? Uh, well, they'll be able to find it on all the streaming platforms. It'll be on Bandcamp, uh, there'll probably be a link to it on our website, which is kasadiband.com, and um, I think it will be for sale at McNally Robinson okay. once it's out. It's called so, This Is Just To Say. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we did mention that yet. Actually, so I'm this is just to say. Yeah, yeah. CDs and vinyl. We're yeah. doing vinyl. Oh, right so on. we won't have that for another month or so. We'll yeah, have CDs while, at the right? release, yeah. Yeah. but we're a bit behind on the vinyl. So okay. that's happening. So, I mean, those are the best ways to listen to for it sure. still. And people can get those at shows. Uh, the well, highest yeah. quality yeah. Exactly. recording you're going to hear. Yeah. 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 When is the release show? So the release show is on Wednesday, September the 25th. The doors are at 7, the show is at 7.30. It is at Crescent Fort Rouge United Church, okay. which is just on Wardlaw. Yeah, I've seen that. In yeah. Osborne. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful. I've never been to a show there, but I've, yeah. I've seen oh, a few Oh, it's shows. awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the acoustics in there are awesome. Cool. So we're very excited that that's where we're playing. Yeah. And we're just, the plan for the show is we're going to play the album from top to bottom, but cool. we'll fill in... Um, audience on what every song is about in more detail maybe than we can in, uh, in the letter notes show. or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and cool. so uh, yeah we hope that if people like what they hear they'll come out and uh, yeah yeah in the in the vinyl we got an insert thing so it'll include all the lyrics we didn't fit that into the CD but okay. in the vinyl we have all the lyrics but it's cool to come to the show I think because we do give some context to every song and I I People I wish people it. could hear that when yeah. they heard the yeah. CD. I mean, the music's great to enjoy themselves, but I think a lot of the music we know and love, we also sort of do know the context of it already. Sure. Uh, well, because you have a lot of the older stuff too, you have the historical exactly. context. And exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I guess that's one of the problems. I mean, as someone who is a complete Luddite and doesn't use any streaming services, and only listen to physical music, I refuse, I'm just super stubborn. Um, well, it's one of the things I like about liner notes in general is that, you know, you can put that information in there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if you're just kind of hitting play on a playlist, you're sort of missing out on a lot of those details. Yeah. You can definitely look it up your, on your own. It's not like you're forbidden yeah. from finding out about it, but yeah. it's yeah, it's not right in front of you. But I, not everybody includes that information they, they anywhere. Don't. That's true. So That's true. I think for yeah. us like we get we do have a lot of people at our live shows say oh I'm so glad that you talked about that a little yeah, bit yeah. before you saying it because then I was really understood everything. And um, yeah so yeah. even on the C D we didn't include the lyrics but we included 
just a little write up about like this is how it was recorded this is sort of what it's about what inspired it just a couple paragraphs to just sort of say hey welcome to this album and here's what you know yeah what we're going to tell you about well i think all three of you throughout this have been saying that um about the importance of sitting and listening and actually like taking in what, you, what it is you're presenting so it makes sense that you'd want to kind of have a mission statement in there yeah. right about you know, yeah. what this is all about yeah, yeah exactly cool well yeah people should check out the show and and the uh buy the album when it comes out uh, whether you are like me or you're all on the internet and that's fine too yeah. <laughs> um, and if you want to hear more episodes of this show you can go to witchpolice.com all 400 and whatever episodes are on there for free download and streaming you can also tune in on Sundays at midnight on 101.5 UMFM and those are older episodes so by the time this actually airs uh, it'll have been a few months after it came out in podcast form so by then the album's already out so yeah, if someone sweet. is driving in their car at midnight turns on the radio they hear about this they can just go home and Great. Spotify it or whatever yeah. right? so, so yeah it's kind of an added bonus an extra bump for the band that was on uh, yeah. I always forget which band is airing on which night so I sometimes find out by accident when I'm flipping through channels oh there's me on the radio and who am I talking to but, cool yeah. what am I doing yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah thanks for coming to meet me I mean I was uh yeah. Glad to hear you had a new record coming out. I really liked the, the previous one, so I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, awesome. thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Tried and tried to change